Hey guys, so welcome back to Raya's Tie-Dye and I am Raya and I know you can't see me right now, but we're gonna talk a little bit about sinew and kite string. So you know what choice to make when you go to tie up a shirt or a tapestry. So the main difference between the two for me and the reason why I would pick one over the other is the white line. Sometimes I use both, sometimes I only use one, but the sinew is for white lines. So if you really, really like that white line, look to your, any of your items, such as t-shirts, tapestries, bags, anything. White lines use the sinew. So for sinew, uh, there, it's waxy. It's supposed to be artificial. If you don't already know what sinew actually is, if you have real sinew, it's actually deer tendon. Uh, it sounds super disgusting, but that is where this kind of stuff came from. This is artificial, obviously, but you know, that's, uh, that's where that came from. Anyways, then we have kite string. Now, obviously you guys know I do not use my kite string on this here, but I wanted to show you this because it is literally kite string. So you can look up on Amazon or wherever you want to buy your kite string from. You can get it at hardware stores, hobby shops. Uh, I bought mine from Amazon. So just in case you don't know already, links in the description box below for both. Uh, there are also a lot of craft stores, hardware stores that carry this. Craft stores carry this. So I don't use mine like this. It is like a polyester, polyester string. So mine is a thicker kind. Um, I don't remember the millimeter. Sorry, you'll have to bear with me on that one. But you can get it thinner, you can get it thicker. This is perfect for me. I personally love sinew way more anyways. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I love it on my tapestries. But this is great for anything such as like the wig wag. Uh, if you like doing spirals but you don't like to use rubber bands, you can use this on it. Literally, this just replaces your rubber bands. So if you're frustrated with rubber bands. It could be a couple of different reasons. The number one reason that I don't personally use very many rubber bands anymore is because it scrunches your uh, material too much for me anyways. So like when you go to put on a rubber band, it just kind of doesn't keep your shape that you want. And I can't get it tight enough. I like my shirts tight enough that if I want to grab it with one hand and whirl it around, it's not going to come undone with kite string, but it will with a rubber band. So this will definitely keep it in place better than rubber bands. Rubber bands, however, are easier. They're pretty much put on and go, put on and die, I should say. And so yeah, so we'll give you a couple examples. I will post somewhere on the screen. My two examples for using kite string is the Tornado t-shirt and the Wigwag Heart tapestry. So I not, didn't use sinew at all for those and I used the kite string. The Tornado shirt is actually perfect for an example just because it is a specific shape but there are no white lines so that gave me my shape in the black border that I wanted for the tornado, but no white lines. So I already have my shirt folded in half, wrinkles pressed out. We're going to use the kite string on this. This is basically going to be a wig wag, different colors than my last video, but that's why I'm doing a wig wag because I'm not doing another tutorial until I come up with something better. So we're going to speed through this part real quick and then we'll get to show you this. All right, you guys, so we have this pleated. We have our marker line is all lined up. So the way that I use my kite string, just because practice makes perfect, I'm gonna show you slower than normal. Obviously, it's gonna be easier for you to see. 
So when I lay my kite string down, I have mine on a dowel. I put it right over the top so that the tail end is away from me. I put my pointer finger right on there like I'm just going to hold it there. And then I'll pick up my thumb and hold that down on to the other side so that it's right over top of my marker line. And then, I don't know if you're left-handed or right-handed, so it might be easier for you to do it a different way. I'm always struggling to do stuff with my left hand, so I'm always trying to do this on my right, so I'm going to try the best I can. So what you're going to do with this side is you're going to get enough string, but you're going to hold it down with your fingers. I don't know if you can even see that. Hold it down with your fingers right on top of your table, and you're going to just slide it under your fabric all the way until you reach it to the other side. And then you're going to pull it back over top. It doesn't even have to be in the same area. And you'll just do it a couple of times until you have the desired thickness that you want or the, you know, as much as you think that it's going to hold it for you the way that you want it to be held. So you'll just do that a couple of times. All right. We have this a couple of times, so now that we're back where we started, we can tie this just a normal, normal knot. I always double knot mine. And you can pull it as tight as you want. You can leave it as loose as you want. I like mine tight, personally. And then I'm just going to cut the excess off. And then you can leave this, the kite string connected and put fix the rest of your shirt however you want. So I'm going to do that real quick. We'll speed through that since I already have a tutorial up. All right, so I don't have it totally fixed the way that I want it to, but that's okay. I want to try to get some of this good stuff tied up before it gets messed up. So now you're going to do the same thing. So if it's easier for you to turn the shirt because you're right-handed like me, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to wrap some of this up a little bit, and then you're going to do the same thing. So you're going to hold it with your thumb closest to you, go underneath, come up. And I do a zigzag pattern, so you can do this however you want. But if you're going to do a long design on a shirt like this, I just go zigzag all the way down. Not really zigzag, I guess is not the right word. I'm going parallel with the rest of the kite string that I just used. So you'll see in a minute why I do that. All right, you guys, so now we're gonna go backwards. So I keep flipping the shirt around so I can work with my right hand. My left hand, I swear, doesn't know how to do anything. So now you're gonna start by kind of crisscrossing your last kite string lines when you went this way. Now we're gonna go this way and crisscross. And you, like I said before, you can tighten it as much as you want. So if you like tighter, tighter folds, or if you're doing like an ice dye and you really want to try to keep the dye in a certain area, the tighter the better. I know it's really hard to not have white in there when you tie it really tight, but that's not always the case. So now I'm going to flip it back around because we're getting toward the end. All right, so now you got to find a spot to tie it. I'm just going to put it right in here. So now you have a wigwag tied up and it's super tight. You can keep it straight. Now what I was talking about with the rubber bands, you can kind of see how the kite string is doing it too. 
But when you use rubber bands and you have them spread out so far, it like really scrunches in your fabric in each spot. And I just feel like the design kind of loses loses its luster a little bit when when that happens. And that's not always the case, like I said. So if you like rubber bands, great. I like them sometimes too, especially with spirals. So there's our kite string. Now, I already have this tied up. It's just a t-shirt with a mandala drawn on it. So we're going to be doing sinew with this. So this is our sinew, like I was saying. I have to find the end of mine. I found it. So real quick, this is all for white lines. I've already said that a million times and I just keep repeating myself. Anyways, so I always make a slip knot with this because it's easier, especially when you're working one handed. Sometimes you have to when you're doing mandalas. So if you ever see my video, Raya's Tips and Tricks, I actually show how to do the slip knot quite a bit. I'm gonna show you one more time in this video, just because it's a sinew kite string video, why not? So I always have my two fingers here. This, the end of the sinew is on the very bottom. The rest of the sinew is over the top. I put this up over the top one, use my two fingers, grab the one that's connected to the dowel and pull it through and boom. Now we have a slip knot. You can make it bigger without it coming undone. You can make it smaller. Obviously, if you pull that knot all the way, it's gonna undo itself, but you can have it as big or as small as you want. Boom. That's how I do mine. So we're gonna get started on this. So this, like I said, is a waxy string. I definitely would use a dowel because if you try to pull the, if you try to pull the sinew just like this and you're pulling it as hard as you can, you're gonna cut your fingers. I have actually almost done it before, but I stopped. So the gist is you should use a dowel. It's safer for you, safer for your hands and you won't pop yourself in the face because you let go of this big old monster of a roll of sinew, like I have done before. Anywho, so we're gonna start tying this up. So basically, when you go to tie your first knot, you put your slip knot on there, match it up with your marker lines, and I always have the knot facing me, just like this. Get rid of the, and at first, at first, I know I'm contradicting myself, but at first you're gonna pull this just enough to hold that for you. You want it to hold it for you so that you can wrap this back around your dowel. And then you're gonna put your hand right down flat on it as hard as you can and pull it but don't pull it all the way because if you pull it all the way, like I said, with that slip knot, it's gonna come right undone. So you're just gonna do it just enough to be tight enough and it's not gonna come undone. Now, because we want white lines, and the thicker the fabric, the more times I would wrap the sinew around. So because it's a t-shirt, it's soft, not thick at all, I'm gonna wrap it around three times, that's my magic number. And then you're gonna put your hand down on it one more time, get rid of your slack and pull it. And then boom, super tight, super duper tight. So basically the sinew is so tight that the dye cannot flow through that area. So kite string is a little different if you get dye on the kite string, it'll soak the dye right up anyways. So I'll show you one more time with the next one. We'll tie it up real quick. So now next one. So after I do that first one, I have it right in line to do my next one. So then I'm going to wrap three times. I don't have to do the first pull yet because you already did the initial pull. And then it wants you to pull this way. 
So I'll get rid of my slack. Pull. And then you're gonna do that all the way up. So we'll do it real quick. Grab your sinew right where it was. One. Make sure it's lined up to right in the area you need it to be on the top and the bottom. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Three. Boom. So now I cut this so that I know that that is where I'm supposed to grab it to where I'm going to unravel it. And boom. A couple good examples of my sinew videos are the Snowflower Tapestry. That's a crowd favorite. And then the geode hoodie or the geode tapestry is also a really, really good sinew video because I use a ton of it. Like, I mean a ton of it. So again, if you don't know when to use these, just watch this video over and over again. Hit that like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. If you're new here, welcome. Links in the description box below for literally everything that I use. Sinew, kite string, rubber bands, t-shirts, everything. So please make sure that you comment. Also visit me on all of my, all, all of my other social media and you can send me pictures of what you guys have done. I love seeing them. I have people send me pictures all the time and I love it, love it, love it. So thank you so much for watching again. I know this wasn't a typical tutorial, but sometimes it's a good thing. We got to shake things up once in a while. Thank you guys for watching. Happy tie-dyeing.